everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really sweet rainfall card or shake, rain shaker card. It's actually one that I saw on the My Favourite Things YouTube channel, so this is my take on it. I think it's really, really sweet. It's turned out much, much better than I thought, and it's really easy to do. All The only patience that's needed is to thread these beads, so if you don't have the patience for that then it may not be the card for you, but otherwise it's really really fun. Now you can also, this would be great for a more Christmas themed card and you can have white beads and you could have a snowman or Father Christmas or any kind of you know Christmas related stamp and it would look like snow and I, I am, I've just ordered some white beads. So once the white beads come I will be sharing a different size and a different setup and I've got a really nice idea for how I'm going to do that one but it's just so much fun. It's using this lovely stamp set here, which is one that I got free with the Creative Stamping Magazine probably about 18 months ago now. And it's got this lovely girl here. You can change the umbrella pattern. Then it's got all these sentiments here, but this is now, I say now, it's available on Craft Stash. I've seen it on there. So I thought, great, I'm gonna get it out again. And at least then you guys can, you know, actually get it as well if you want to. So it's really good value for money as have most of the stamps been that I've been sharing. But like I said, I'm just really, really pleased with how it turned it out. I have added acetate onto the front of mine as well because I just thought, you know, you put all the effort into that. If that was to catch on something, I'd be really upset if they were to, you know, obviously come apart. So I've just put a sheet of acetate over the front and it adds a shine to it as well. And I've also added glossy accents here, just the top of her Wellington boots and the puddle and it's on the umbrella and in her hair. And it just, again, just looks like she's wet from the rain. So let me show you how to make this fun card. Okay, so I'm gonna get straight into this because you can use any size card that you want. So I'm working on a five by seven card base. So I've got a piece of five by seven plain white cardstock here, which I'm gonna use as my background. And I'm now gonna distress this using, not gonna distress it, I'm going to <laughs> blend a background using my distress oxide inks, which is what I wanted to say. So I've just got this silicon mat here and um, I've got my faded jeans, tumbled glass and chipped sapphire. I'm not sure if I'm going to use all three, but I'm certainly going to start with tumble glass. Now I want to create a dark background so it really does look like a thunderstorm kind of thing because my beads are clear and I want those to show up on my background. So if I go too light with the background, these clear beads, you're not going to be able to see them. So I'm going to start with the tumble glass so I've got a little bit of highlight. Now I have gone and already coloured all of this, but I'm, I'm going to add in a little video afterwards really just to show you how I've put her together. She looks really sweet. But where she will be positioned, I want a little bit of more of a the tumble glass kind of highlight around her and then we'll go out into the darker colour. So first of all, take this one and I've just got one of my makeup blending brushes here. Ooh, dipped my finger right in it there. Get that nice inked up. So I'm gonna kind of start around here. So depending on what it is you're using, and you don't even have to do your own background. I have got some card stocks from one of those paper packs from the works, which has actual raindrops, but it's just too light. It's just not really gonna work. So, but you can, you know, easily have a patterned paper background. So I'm just going to you know, have something like this more so there. And I think from this, I'm gonna start kind of blending out and start to introduce more of the darker color. So if you imagine she is gonna be kind of here with her umbrella that she's gonna be playing in the water. I've already done this little puddle here as well, which is really, really sweet. Um, and you can see how the whole thing will, hopefully, yeah, it's all gonna work out well. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more just to make that a bit darker there. Okay, so we'll just stick with that for the minute. I'm gonna keep my light brush there and then I'm just gonna bring in another one. And then I think I'm gonna go, no, I'm gonna use faded, I am gonna end up using all three just because of the way I'm doing it, but you don't have to. I'm then gonna bring in the faded jeans and I'm gonna go all around all of the sides now, bringing this in. So just start coming in all the way around. Bring in some paper here just to put down, just so you don't get any finger marks. The oxide inks do take a little bit longer to dry completely. I'm just gonna start pulling that into there. And then as you start to work it with that tumbled glass in my case, it will naturally start to blend itself. Oh, sorry, I've just looked up at my monitor and saw it had gone blurred. Hopefully that wasn't like that for too long. 
but as you kind of bring it together you'll see you start to get a really nice kind of blend there. So I'm just going to rotate around this side. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go in with the darker in a minute, but I'm just going to bring her in because, like I said, I do want her to be, yeah, you see it's just got this really nice little glow behind her, so she still kind of pops. So I'm not going to interfere with that anymore. And then I'm going to, because I do want it to be a bit more of an angry-looking background because once I add the water, because this is water-reactive inks, I'm going to add some splatters. I'm not sure, I've got a stencil here, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that yet, we shall see. So then I'm just going to kind of just, just lightly kiss the sides. Now, I have got this piece here, which I'll talk you through in a moment, but this is my cloud at the top. So this is going to be here, and those rain drops beads are going to fall down from behind that. So this darker colour, I actually want to come down a little bit further because otherwise most of it's going to be covered. So I'm just going to work this a little bit more. And because that um, faded jeans underneath this, you know, this other blue here is still wet, it just they just blend really, really well. And you can also dry them in between layers and then go back in so you get a more intense colour. But I'm just going to work this a little bit until I'm happy with the look. Okay, so that's that. Let me just have a little look at this stencil. So this stencil is an old stamping up one, but it's like water droplets. And I did think it doesn't fit over the whole five by um, five by seven, but that doesn't matter because you're not going to see the top or the bottom. So I'm just showing you purely my process. But what I don't want it to do is take away from the beads that are going to fall and obviously her as well. I think what I'm going to do Let's just go for it. So I'm going to go in again with the same darker colour, but because this has dried a bit more now, it should become a little bit more intense. I can always do this again, I'm not too worried. So I'm going to ink this up. <clears throat> you can tape it down if you want, but I'm just going to hold this in place. In fact, I'll put this over the top as well. Roughly keep it straight, like so. And I'm going to go over again. I'm still going to distress this with, um, you know, I'm still going to add my water to this. I just want to just create quite a fun background, really. I don't want to shift this. I want to keep this in place because I'm going to continue it. Okay, let's do a reveal. There. That's actually really, I'm really pleased with that. That's better than I thought. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. But what I am going to do is, like I said, I'm just going to go over this. Oh, that's one side. So I'm not going to touch any more now with the dark, that's done. But I am going to go back in with the tumbled glass and I'm just going to lift this back again. So just kind of fade out those droplets within that area because I just don't want her to get lost behind, you know, with all those droplets around. Hopefully that's still coming out well. Let's bring her back in again. Yeah, I just wanted it to look a bit more. Yeah, I think that's going to look good. And once the beads are all on there. So I've just got a clean, um, just a little sponge piece there. And then I've got my water here. Now you can spray it directly or you can drip the droplets onto it. I like both ways, to be honest, because I like with this particular, this is just an inexpensive one I picked up from the shop, but you get larger droplets than... You know, you get a nice mix of droplets, this is what I'm trying to put across, so you get a more realistic look. So let's just put all this away. So what I'm going to do is do it this way, because for people that don't have a spray bottle, this is how you can also achieve it. And you're just going to drip. Like that. So I just want that real, yeah, mess look. And then put that over the top. Push it down. So this is faux bleaching bleaching basically this is another technique that people use to create fun backgrounds there we go so you don't have to do that some of you might think now oh no you've ruined it but it's all going to tie in 
with my sentiment, with the whole look of the card, with the rain, with the clouds, and it will all come together really nicely. So now what I would advise you to do is just give that a quick blast with your gun, heat gun. Okay, so that's my background. So then I have this cloud. Now I got this from these cloud dies here. Now I actually purchased these from a D stash from Crafty Orla when she was closing down her store. And these were in a, a bundle of all kinds of different borders. So that's what I've got for the top here. Okay, so that's going to be the clouds from above. Now I need to ink these up a little bit, make them a little bit grey. Not too grey, but just a little bit grey. And then I also went and cut a piece of five by one and a half for the bottom. Now I actually want to do this the same as this. So I'm going to quickly go and prepare that piece and I'm also going to ink that piece up as well. Okay for the clouds I'm just using weathered wood and I'm just going to just kiss, I like using that word, I think it was, it's a good one, just literally just catching, kissing the bottoms of the clouds. There so now we just got a bit more of a grey rain cloud rather than a nice crisp white one. Okay, so I've got all my pieces ready for the cards. So whatever card size you're using, you want a piece for the bottom. So I've also got some acetate here. I've, I think I might end up using it. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so now we need the main piece here. And then I've got some of this. This is the clear foam, the dot and dab range. And I'm going to pop my foam. My, well, yeah, it's... See, I think a foam is being white, but this is classed as a clear foam. So I'm going to run it just along the top there, about, about half an inch down. And again, I'm going to come up about half an inch. Now, we will probably add some more of this in a bit. But for the minute, I'm just going to add that there. Okay, so just sit that to one side. Then I've got all my beads. So I have already done nine of these. So basically, I've got some nylon thread here. You can use fishing line, I imagine. You want something that's strong, and I've gone for something clear because I want the focus to be on the beads moving freely. And you can see when it's against there, you, you don't really see that, you know, the, the, the thread there. You're just gonna see the rain falling. Now I'm doing 10, so I'm gonna do one quickly with you. And on each of these, I've got between 20 and 25 beads. Again, I don't want them to all be the same height because when they do fall to the bottom, I want them to all be a little bit staggered. So I've just tied off for each thread here is about 17 inches. It doesn't need to be that long. Again, this card is seven by five, so my height is seven. Once we stick it down, you can see there where they're gonna be and how much you need. But I just knotted off, giving myself lots of room to be able to then have enough excess overhanging each end. So I've got nine. Now to achieve that, it's very, very simple. So these are the C beads. This was one of the tubes that I got with that, when I, I won that little giveaway. It was a Friday giveaway and um, they're this mix here. I also got the little beads and you get the glitter that came. It was from Stick To, but you can use any beads and they can be big beads as well. You just have to have more foam. So you've got the depth for the beads to be able to move freely. You could use sequins. And um, like I said at the very beginning, this will look great in a snow themed card. So you would have white beads. Okay, so plenty of options to, you know, really change it up. So this is my craft nylon thread. This is about a pound, you get 50 meters. That's the brand, that is it. It doesn't, um, it's that like crafted one that's always sold in the range. So I'm just cutting off some there and I'm just gonna knot the end. Okay, and then I've got my little pickup tool here. I'm just going to tip a few out. I don't have, well, I did have a bead board, but I think it's gone. It's gone somewhere, so I can't seem to find it. Okay, so I'm just going to pick them up and then just literally, oh, I was really quick at this doing those. It took me about, I'd say, half an hour to do those 10. And like I said, I'm using between 20 and 25 beads per per thread. It's, it's up to you how many threads you have. I'm doing 10, so I think that's going to be enough to fill the width of that card, but you might want to have it really, really full. You might not want to have as much. You might just have it one side. You might not even be doing a rain theme. You might actually just want it just more as a decorative, just a fun, interactive element to your card. So, Okay, so I've got, I think I've got about 22 on that one, so I'm just going to tie off the end 
Okay, so now you want to bring in whatever it is that you're going to have at the bottom and the top, you're probably going to need some more foam. Yeah, so I'm going to have another foam piece coming, so it's just above my shortest point there. So it's going to be about there, okay? And then this one, I'm going to add another piece of foam quite higher up there, because you don't want it, this piece dipping. So where did I put my foam? There we go. So I'm just going to add another one up here, as long as it's concealed behind whatever it is that you're using to cover, you know, the top and the bottom of your card. But this one here. Now, if you want to add any more to your background, you might want to have your stamped image, you know, your sentiment, yours may well be on this. You, you want to make sure you've done all that now because next we're going to start putting the, our strips, our nylon string onto here. Okay, so I'm just going to take off my backing. Okay, so I've just taken the release paper off. Now, do be careful. Make sure if you're using the oxide and any water and stuff that it's completely dry. I must have had some slightly damp areas because my double-sided foam was actually lifting. So just there, you can see it's a bit lighter. And also in the middle there, it's a little bit lighter. So I've just added some glue as well, but it should be fine. But now you want to start with your strings. So I'm going to start from the middle and work my way out. Now because I'm using an even number, I will come slightly off to one side. Okay, so you want to keep your beads within the centre and then as straight as possible and just lie it down because you're going to be sandwiching this with a, another piece of foam over the top so there will be a bit of dimension on this and make sure you keep it nice and taut and you can test that one now already you can see there it moves really freely okay so yeah just work your way along so the next one always make sure that your beads are in the middle okay and then this one I'm going to pop about there okay I'm going to trim some off there now because once you add the foam on top your beads won't be able to slide off unless they're pulled out so there's, there's just no way of them getting out okay so I'm going to continue that process and get everything else stuck down Okay, so they're now all stuck down. I needed to add an extra one. So I've got 11 in total because it just didn't look right having that space there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some more foam over the top of this to sandwich the, the, the thread between them. You also need to make sure that whatever your width of your, your thickness of your tape is, is thicker or higher than the, the beads. Otherwise the beads won't move freely. They'll kind of slide on the paper. Okay, so you might need to stick two layers of foam down, then the thread, and then another layer. Okay, so just have a little look at what you've got, but I'm now going to just stick another piece right over the top of each of these. Okay, now I'm just going to trim all of the ends. If you would want to knot them as well, then you can do, but once this has got this, the paper, or the cardstock over the top, People can't get into it and, you know, like I said, the only way it's all going to come out now is if someone ripped it apart. Okay, so if I bring that up now, you can see how neat and I've cut all them back. Now, don't worry if one bead sticks to each one because that just, again, makes your rain fall really freely. So you'll see I've got one stuck on the bottom of each there and then one stuck on the top there. That's fine. You're not going to see that. But look how nicely they all fall. Okay, I've probably maybe even got too many again, but it's fine. That's then going to go there, and that's going to stick there. But this is now where I'm thinking about using this acetate. Now, the reason my reasoning behind it is to stop people touching it, and then there'd be a risk of them catching it and things like that. So I thought about sandwiching a piece of acetate there then putting these and because of the, the reflection the reflection that you get off the acetate actually does work quite well with this style so if I just bring this up you've got to bear in mind this will be stronger once it's stuck to your card base but I quite like there you go you can see the acetate so I think I'm going to plus it allows me to have a better surface to be able to stick her because I think that if I just stick her without the acetate some of these beads are going to catch on her 
so it's it's entirely up to you the acetate is completely optional but I do for me I think I prefer it with the acetate just to protect the card you know postage in the envelope even if you're just keeping it for yourself which I may end up doing <laughs> yeah I just think it's going to work a bit better but I really like how this is coming together so I'm going to keep my acetate there so I'm going to reveal I'm going to release the backing off of this and then I'm going to stick that acetate down Okay, my acetate is slightly shorter, so it's about six and three quarters, but it's the same five inch width, but I'm, I'm pleased with that. Then I'd already put double sided tape on this side, so I've taken that off, and now I can just sit that perfectly, oh. like so, and then this bottom piece, like so. And I've just realized what I've done, and you've probably noticed as well. But all the effort I went to to create that kind of lighter area there is now up in the sky and it should be behind her. <laughs> but I think we can still get away with it. So, see, even me, I make mistakes. <laughs> A lot, actually. So, okay, that is now all ready, though. So now I'm going to bring it up. What we'll do is we'll get this stuck onto our card base because I think that's going to help the whole thing work better because it's not going to dip because it's quite um there's quite a bit of weight on this actually surprisingly with all the beads so i'm just gonna pop some of my liquid glue all on this make sure your card opens the right way and this is covering the whole of that card so the whole five by seven it works perfect they all fall it's like an abacus it's really, really satisfying. I love this. Okay, so now I've got my lovely little girl here and her umbrella. I will link in now a quick high-speed video of me colouring her. I used my Arteza coloured pencils. So you get a nice, you, it's really easy to kind of blend with these because you can just, the more pressure you apply, the deeper the colour. And then obviously the lighter you are, you'll get those highlighted areas, which I've got. So I'll just link in that video now. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I want to actually cut around her little glove here because I want to hook the umbrella behind her so she's holding it. So I'm just cutting around very carefully. Completely optional of course, but I just want that hand to come up 
lots of them, the handle of the umbrella, because she's not going to put it above her head, she's going to be playing in a puddle and she's going to be like that and I think it looks really really sweet. So I'm going to add some glue to this piece here and just underneath her glove just to kind of get that piece fixed in place. Like so. Then I'm going to fix her to the puddle. So I'm just going to again pop some glue on the bottom of her feet. Like so. And some of the umbrella is touching there as well, so I'm just going to pop another bit of glue there so it becomes one solid piece. And then on the back of that, I'm going to stick some red tape because I'm going to be sticking her, the majority of her, onto the acetate. So I'm going to add it onto her body, the umbrella, and then the puddle. I'm just going to add liquid glue because that's going to be on this piece here. I like how they all kind of come down like slightly staggered as well like that I think it looks really really cool and once it's all up like that they're all yeah I just wanted you to be able to see them because I just think it's I think that brings in the curiosity to people then they think oh what does that do and you just automatically start moving it so now I have my sentiment which I didn't think I was going to put it up here, but I'm wondering now whether to add another layer of cloud over the top of this, because I do have the two dies, so I could quite easily die cut a different one. So that was that one, so I could die cut this one, so it's just a little bit kind of like that, a little bit staggered, so I think that's what I'm going to do there, and just stick another one over the top, and then I'm probably going to have my sentiment here, and the one I'm going to choose is this one. Sorry to hear you're under the weather. And that's the one that I'm going to have there. So I'm going to stamp that on some separate cardstock and get that cut out. Because I don't think I want it up there. But then you want to be able to see the rain. But then I just think that's a bit of a plain space when it's, um, you know, not being used and it's just on display. So, yeah, I'm going to do that one anyway and then we can play around. Okay, so I have stuck this down and I've just used a little bit of string and I've used a little brad just to have like a little sign hanging from the clouds. I just felt it needed something up there. I have also added some glossy accents, so this here, and this is a great thing to use if you want to create the look of something wet. So it goes on cloudy, but it dries completely clear. So then that will just look like, you know, rain droplets, little dew drops. So I've done the whole puddle and some of it over her bottom of her Wellington boots, and then I've done all these dots and a few on her hair. But once those dry clear, it looked really good. But I'm, I'm really pleased with how this comes together. It moves really freely. It's a bit time consuming. You know, you do have to thread all those beads, but as I mentioned, you can use sequins, you can use thicker beads, so it doesn't take as long, but you have to make sure that you give the depth with that foam that's needed for whatever beads you're using. So you can see here, these ones all move really nicely. So there it is. So I hope you've enjoyed today's card. I hope it's inspired you. As always, if it has, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.